All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Bill Kersija. How are you doing, Bill? I'm doing well, John. How about yourself? Excellent. And, and where are you located today, Bill? <laughs> I'm located right here in San Diego as well. Ah, there you go. Under the same <laughs> blue sky. You can see that's why, that's why Bill's smiling. <laughs> it's a beautiful day outside and hope we have a, a beautiful weekend. Yeah. Um, and, and Bill is from Professional Success South and he coaches people on, on sales, uh, all things sales. And what we wanted to talk today about is communicating uh, communicating more effectively for sales. But let's face it, right now, uh, communication is a big challenge during the crisis we're in. Maybe you're communicating virtually for the first time. Maybe you're having a hard time communicating with anybody right now you know, because maybe your customers and prospects are, are hard to get in contact with or, or maybe they're just hard to get them to focus on what you want to talk about right now um, given where their heads are at. So, so Bill, what are some of the what are some of the strategies you can use, or ways to look at how you're communicating today to assess whether you're doing it in the right way? Well, it's interesting because you know, yes, we can talk a lot about our current situation, but mm -hmm. foundationally, communication. If you if you build the right foundation and focus on the the pillars of, the, of that foundation, then you know, no matter what the situation is in our environment, the communication will be there. But we're seeing a lot of holes and gaps and the lack of communication at this point, just because, you know, people never had to do it outside of the face to face or the in person and, you know, that type of environment. So, you know, those other factors come into play. So a lot of the practices that, you know, I'm working with a lot of clients at this point in time, especially in the retail market of communicating with customers virtually online and, and over the telephone or, you know, text message and now Zoom is a huge part of our environment is just, you know, the pillars, one of the main pillars are empathy. Okay. Right. And, you know, this is such an important time to, to have that and understand what empathy is. And that's really walking in the other person's shoes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have an agenda. You know, I, I have a message that I need to get across to you, but you also have one that you need to get across to me. And I need to be understanding of that and give you the time to do that. Yeah, and I think it's a I think it's a it's a really interesting point right now is that obviously this is these are foundational and fundamental anyway, empathy, but you probably have to ratchet up your empathy a bit more right now because <laughs> yes. You know, given, like we said, given the fact that people are, are confused and distracted and worried and all of that, and then you mix into it, like you just said, if you're working with clients now who are having to do things virtually and they never did before, um, okay. they also then have to sort of, you know, they have to, they have to, if you like, calm themselves down before they can even deal with the other person. Yes, absolutely. And, and one of the key traits that I, I first and foremost push to anyone that we start to have a conversation is, you know, pause. That pause mm -hmm. is so important when, you know, we're so quick to react. We live in a society to where everything is reaction and nothing is really planned out and, and, and thought through. Well, we're at a time where we have to think things through. We don't know what the situation for the person on the other end of the, the Zoom call yeah. or phone or, or email is going through. You know, we're all working from home for the most part. We have, we have our, our, our kids running around in the background, our animals, our pets. I mean, it's just, you know, in San Diego, the airport's right in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. So you have the airplanes. I mean, there's just a lot going on. And you have to realize that you're not the only one facing challenges, the person you're trying to communicate with is, as well. Yeah, and I think that's a really important point because it's it's very easy to be, get obviously self consumed. But to your to your point though, is we live in a culture that celebrates reaction and just things happen immediately and so, and immediate gratification and all that. So taking a pause is something you almost have to teach yourself to do nowadays. Yeah. Yes, and and teaching and practicing. So. I do a lot of practice with, with clients mm. and we discuss that a lot and, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. If you, you kind of fall backwards a little bit and take, you know, take that, those two steps forward, one step back approach. And, you know, everything we're going through now 
if we pay attention to it and, and work at improving upon it, when we go through it again in the future, because there's going to be situations in the future, sure. we'll be better prepared. And that's the whole point. And that's yeah. what you want to stress with everything that you're doing. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, these um, we're in a particular crisis right now. But if you look back, these happened, you know, maybe not on the same scale. But, you know, I mean, I was telling somebody earlier today, I mean, I came to America 22 years ago. I came during the dot com era I came to Silicon Valley. And that was interesting until it all fell apart overnight. Um, and <laughs> yeah, then, sure. and then we, you know, had the financial crisis later on. And then we, so these things are going to happen. So to your point is to learn from, learn from them and prepare as best you can, but then also to realize that sometimes you just, you're going to have to flex with the situation. And that's, I think where it comes in, what you were saying is, you got to really put yourself in the shoes of the other person on the other end because yes. you don't know how badly this is affecting them. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I always talk about empathy as being the, the main pillar of all communication. You know, listening and being assertive and all those other factor into it, but ultimately they all apply to empathy. And if you can really focus on that and pay attention and, and understand, then you'll do very well in the forms of communication. And then that leads into your message being successfully transmitted to the other person because then they feel you caring about their approach and what they're dealing with and they're more willing to absorb and, and understand what you're, what you're talking about. Yeah, and open up to you, obviously, because yeah. let's face it, um, if, I, if I believe that, that you are actually, you know, care about what's going on with me and, and your understanding of that, then the chance of me engaging in an open dialogue with you is obviously that much higher. Absolutely. We, we, we are brought up to believe that communication is how much can I tell you, when in, <laughs> in fact, communication is how much can you make the other person feel safe? And sometimes doing that is not saying anything at all. So on that point, right, I mean, given today, so if you do get an opportunity to talk to a prospect or a customer, how do you make them, how do you make them feel safe? You know, given the fact that maybe their overarching feeling right now is one of being completely not safe. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. You want to, you want to take the approach of, talking about other things, relatable items, talk about mm -hmm. the situation. Hey, how are you dealing with it? What's going on? You know, all, all we, all of us, we want to be heard really mm -hmm. at the core of it all. And we want to feel like what we say and how we think and feel matters. So if you can, you know, slow down the conversation and, and ask them, how are they doing? And genuinely you use that, con that moment to, to listen to them, then, you know, the rest of the conversation is going to be a lot easier because they feel safe in your presence, whether it's yeah. over the phone or through video at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's a good point, too, is on the video part is that, I mean, we've been doing this for a long time. So, you know, a lot of us are very comfortable with virtual and with video and all that. Some people aren't. And I think this is one of the times when you sort of have to get over that because, uh, if you just do it on the phone or if you do a Zoom meeting without your camera turned on, you're, you're leaving, you're, you're, le you're outsourcing a lot to fate, I think, at that Absolutely. stage because you're not making that personal connection. Well, you're 100% you're, you're, you're correct. And in fact, a lot of times we think of communication in the form of our verbal words, mm -hmm. where actually 93% of communication is nonverbal. 55% of that is your body language. So we read and understand each other a lot more with our body language, our facial expressions, our eye contact than we ever do with the words. Because how many times have you said something to someone and they only heard maybe the first two words? Right. So it just proves the point that we listen more with what we see with our eyes and feel through that than we do as far as with our ears and the words that are said. And also, I mean, the fact is that, uh, you know, the person can see if you're looking at the camera and you look like you're paying attention as opposed to you're going, yeah, yeah, that's, um, yeah, absolutely. And you're off and they can <laughs> see that you're doing emails or whatever at the same time. But if you're not on camera, then they're going to, when there's a silence, they're going to assume that you're doing something else. So, I mean, yes. there's a practical part to it too. Yes, absolutely. We, we, we naturally go to the 
I don't, I don't like to use the word negative, but it is the negative yeah. side. We yeah. think that, okay, they're not on camera. So they're probably not even in the same room right now. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yes, I, I totally agree with, you know, be on cameras, get that face to face, because not only is it good for the person on the other end, it's good for you as well. Because yeah. what happens? You get cleaned up, you get dressed up. Mm. If those things are important. That is an internal communication that you're having with yourself. Yeah, no. So it, it does keep you honest. Exactly. It means you have to be presentable. It means you have to take care of your surroundings. It means then you have to show that you're attentive when you're having the, the meeting or the call. So it's all, all of them are good disciplines uh, because uh, let's face it, especially if you're doing this for the first time, the the temptation can be there to think, oh, OK, well, where's my favorite sweats? I'm not going to bother you know, right. just getting ready today. And 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 then you're not really in work mode. Correct. It's, it's, like I said, it's that internal communication. Mm -hmm. Our actions mm -hmm. speak to our feelings and, and how we portray ourselves. So it's real important to, to understand that and approach it daily like that. So what do you think is, is still um, one of the most overlooked uh, communication factors that, that salespeople maybe don't pay as much attention to as they should? Probably the number one thing has been and always will be listening. Mm-hmm. You know, we're always in a, as a salesperson, we're in a hurry. We think that the faster we can get from step one to step 10 right. will be the faster we can get the yes. When in actuality, you know, slow down to speed up. If you slow mm -hmm. down and listen and you really pay attention and understand what the other person's, you know, wants, needs and, and what's value to them, the value adds, then you're going to, you're going to get to step 10 a lot faster than if you try to rush through it. So listen, yeah, by far is. I know. And, and it's interesting that, I mean, as you said, that, that that's still the, the often the hardest skill to teach people. It takes discipline. And, and sometimes, and, and the other thing, it also depends who you're talking to, right, as well. I mean, sometimes if you're talking to somebody who's highly analytical, you ask them something, you also got to give them a moment or two to digest what right. you said. Therefore, you have to allow some silence. And some people can't stand that, right? They can't stand, they right. feel like they have to fill the silence. They, that awkward moment. And, and that, that really speaks to practicing. So how do you overcome it? It's, you know, it's like anything else. When we learned how to walk, we kept falling. Right. But how do we overcome mm -hmm. it? You keep getting up. It, we don't do that when it comes to communication because... You know, I don't know about you, but I was never told anywhere in my educational life that communication was an important part. When in fact, communication is the most important part. There are so many students that are scared to raise their hand because they haven't been taught how to communicate. It's not yeah. because they don't know the answer or think they're scared of the reaction. And it's just because they were never taught that communication is all about that. Yeah, and think of it, how many people, have, their careers have been held back because, you know, they didn't know how to communicate or they were afraid right. to speak up. And then they're sat there looking at maybe the person who has no problem speaking up, but isn't as half as talented as they are, who happens to be a couple of levels above them. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think your point is absolute. We don't teach that. No, and and that's, you know, a lot of what I've gone through is self-taught and you know, mm -hmm. I took a, a step and went into the military when I was 20 years old. And if it wasn't for that, I was the, the quiet one. I just kind of wanted to drift into, I wanted to get by. I didn't, you know, right. and, you know, I, I learned, I had to assert myself and that taught me communication. And then I went into the, the retail sales world and been mm -hmm. there for the last 20 years. So, you know, I definitely see the value in learning how to communicate and then practicing and getting better at it. because you're never perfect. You're always learning. So what was the, um, just, just out of interest. So when you did, uh, when you were the quiet one and you went into the military, what was, uh, I mean, how quickly were you able to transition into, into being assertive and what was it that kind of triggered that? Well, it was, you know, the basic training and just being put mm -hmm. into positions that you had to lead people. So, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to say punishment, but you know, when, yeah. when, when you're going through things like that and you have something that needs to a job that needs to be accomplished and you're in charge of it. And when it doesn't get accomplished, everyone has to do push-ups or whatnot. Sure. Pretty quickly you figure out how to, uh, you know, become uh, able, be able to communicate with the team in order to accomplish the mission. So it was really putting myself into the military 
which the military forces you to do the things that you're not comfortable doing. And then once mm -hmm. I was past the, the awkward and the uncomfortableness, I was able to keep expanding. So then in, in, in outside of a military context, I mean, a lot of times you, uh, you really have to um, impose this kind of accountability on yourself, right? Hold yourself Correct. accountable uh, um, uh, for what you're supposed to be doing. Correct. Uh, now, there's a lot of things that, that we do when we work with, with clients and companies is, you know, especially sales teams, there's usually more than one salesperson. So it's, it's pretty simple concept. A salesperson has a very difficult, a hard time selling their peers, you know, sit in a room with everybody, all the other sales teams and, and pitch them. It's almost mm -hmm. impossible a lot of times because they get very intimidated. But if you keep practicing and, and practicing and practicing that situation, uh, eventually you're going to earn your, the business of your coworkers. So then what happens when you, you know, run into a customer for the first time, you don't know them. You're going to approach that with a lot more confidence. You're mm -hmm. going to communicate much better. So really practicing is the core, right? You know, it's not, don't let them practice on the consumer because who's suffering? The consumer yeah. is, yeah. right? So they're not getting the best value. And it's interesting, yeah, when you do those role plays and you have a, a, a salesperson playing a customer and the other salesperson, whatever, trying to sell to them, it's always the hardest customer they've ever come across, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So if you can get through that, like actual customers seem pretty easy after that. Correct. And, you know, you have to obviously manage it and make sure, sure that everybody's, yeah. you know, you let them have fun, but, you know, let mm -hmm. them also understand what the, the goal is. And I tell I tell clients that I do one-on-one -on -one work with, you know, talk to your family, mm -hmm. you know, have sit down and say, Hey, I want to practice it. That's what's going to make the difference in your world. If you want to be get, become better at what you're doing, practice it, you know, whatever that is. But ultimately, no matter what field you're in, no matter what line of work you're in right now, we have a, you know, I have young kids. So it's teaching and classwork, mm -hmm. the communication there that teachers understand how to communicate in a classroom, but they're struggling like you, you started yeah. off with this online world. And, yeah. you know, well, hopefully they're learning from it and they're going to keep practicing it so that if we run into this or when we run into this, they'll be able to do much better at it. Yeah, and I think that's a great point and a, and a great way to, to end this on this, the idea of practicing, because it is funny how we will... We'll practice our hobbies all the yeah. time, but we won't practice, but we rarely practice the thing that actually puts bread on our table. It's quite, <laughs> yeah. it's quite strange. And yeah, I mean, it's funny. I mean, the teachers are probably a great example right now of people who were very confident in the way they do things, but now they've been put into an alien environment and you can see the confidence draining away from them. Yes, it's, it's a whole new world. So you have to learn it. And, and fear mm -hmm. is what causes the lack of confidence. And knowledge is what gains confidence. So once yeah. you learn how to do something properly, you're confident in it. And, it, and then that, that feeling comes across. So Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, Bill, this has been great. Um, all of Bill's information is going to be in his contributor bio, um, all the links and everything. But before we go, Bill, do please tell people about yourself, your company and what you do. Yes, um, a company is called Professional Success South. We work with uh, large clients and individuals on how to communicate, how to build a process within whatever um, line of work that you guys are in and maximize that. Absolutely. And, and process is something that is really, really important. And I think that if you don't have good processes right now, you don't have a good sales process, this current crisis has probably amplified that for you or shone a huge light on it. So now's a good time. So I encourage you to look into the work that Bill does. All right, well, listen, thanks again, Bill. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.